Oh, surely there could be something better that I could be doing with my life right now, could there? Well, let me briefly explain what the objective is and how it's gonna be achieved. I'm not gonna say the objective because it's already probably in the title, but how it's gonna be done is I'm gonna start on Windows 2000, upgrade to XP, then to Vista, then to 7. I wonder how things are going to turn out and what's gonna change and whatnot and what stuff will still be working by the time that we get to Windows 7. Well, I think we're, I should get into a bit of history at first. For some background, Windows 2000 was released in 1999, or slash 2000, XP was released in 2001, Windows Vista was released in 2006 slash 07, and Windows 7 was released in 2009. The uh, socket that we are using, Socket 478, was released in around 2001, and was uh, replaced by LGA 775 in 2004. As for the computer that I am using, that would be the E2000, which I've used a few times in a few uh, different videos. And and going into the history of it, this PC was introduced around mid-2002 in the midst of a pretty bad time as in for computer sales as purchases of computers were kind of on the decline in, during this time period. Not as many people were buying things, probably because well, a lot of people had computers now and people didn't necessarily need to replace their stuff every year and, you know, compared to these days. HP and IBM also were doing some things here and the entry level model for this PC had a 1.8 gig gigahertz Acceleron, 128 megabytes of RAM, a 20 gigabyte hard drive, a CD-ROM drive, integrated graphics, and a CRT monitor. The price? Starting at around 850 bucks, not including tax. And for a frame of mind, this PC is not that great in retrospective. It can't play Bejeweled 2, otherwise this happens. It can't play a video, I don't have footage of it in the first place, but I know that it struggles when trying to play proper video. And this PC can struggle under different newer operating systems and Windows 2000, and we'll get to that in a little bit. It's gonna get very fun. The specifications are right here, a Intel Celeron 2.6 GHz, 512 MB of RAM, 150 GB hard drive, integrated graphics, and several USB ports and whatnot. So, let's bring it on now, shall we? Let's get going. Just let me back up my data first, and then we should be all good to go. Let's start with Windows 2000. In terms of a sample of the catalog of applications that I have on here, we have uh, Mozilla 1.2, Lawrence and Antivirus 2002, and Microsoft Word 2000. I'm going to test other programs that we have installed in later in here, but that's gonna basically summarize it briefly some of the programs on here. In terms of games, we have Tahoe 7. Oh wait, that doesn't work. Grand Theft Auto. The built-in pinball game. Age of Empires. And by viewer request, I'm going to try Quake on here. Surprisingly, all four games I tested, or the two games I have uh, never played on here before, actually run quite well and don't make this computer struggle very harshly. I can't say the same for some games I have tried on here, such as Bejeweled 2, which came out the same year this computer was built, which uh, Bejeweled 2 crashed this computer. This likely makes this system a bit of a better 90s gaming PC than expected. I mean, Windows 2000 isn't that great for gaming in the first place, but with what I have tested, in terms of 90s games, they all run quite quite well. I also forgot to mention that we have Microsoft Entertainment Pack, which will come up a little bit later, so stay tuned. And now it's time for our first upgrade, Windows XP. And to put it simply, the first was the worst. If you've ever heard the saying, like, first is worst, second is best, third is, you know, that, that phrase. Seriously, this did not go well. It went off without a hitch at first, but, but then once it started copying files, it then gave me a error. This error is something that has to do with the computer's disk drive. Now, this computer's disk drive at first doesn't seem too bad, but it's not the greatest, and I think that's probably why. So, as such, I dragged out my HP Pavilion A735W, which has a better disk drive, or better DVD drive, because we're gonna need DVDs for this video, and then I basically just uh, swapped the uh, drives of, of the uh, Gateway E2000 and the HP Pavilion A735W, and that worked until I got this error. Wow, this year must be the year of the blue screen. <laughs> 
But I was able to get around this by turning off the audio in the system BIOS. Well, after that was figured out, I then got to the desktop and then it was in 16 colors and 640 by 480. Now the solution is to just install the video driver. While this video is not sponsored because it's a community project, I would like to give a big thanks to Legacy Update for helping make some pretty big contributions to the video in some way with their Legacy Update service. This is a service that provides uh, updates to older computers. I wanted to make a video about, about it, but never did. In fact, Michael MJD did a video on it. It had uh, helped with this because I needed a video driver, and the uh, computer's video driver is on Legacy Update. That shameless plug that isn't even about myself uh, set aside, we're now with a working Windows XP install that doesn't have 16 colors and 640 by 40 resolution. So, what's changed? We now have the Luna theme as the, the default theme, as applied here. It updated almost everything to a version 5.1, and that's basically about it. I did update Internet Explorer to Internet Explorer 8, however, because of the fact that that's generally something that you should do at least. But for what's been retained, the background stayed the same, although I changed it to the Windows 2000 default one, since all the Windows 2000 backgrounds remained in the web folder where the backgrounds are stored. I also had Windows Me backgrounds in there, and those were also kept. And with the classic theme, it keeps our previous configuration that we had with Windows 2000, and that's what we'll choose by default in this case. What about programs? Well, imaging is still here. We also have the Microsoft Entertainment Pack, and well, hey, Toho 7 works. We also have Netscape Navigator 6.2, Norton Antivirus 2002, AutoCAD 2000, and Photoshop 6. Last but not least in the uh, application department, we have Microsoft Word 2000, which is still here. Let's move on to games now. The three games that I haven't shown yet still work and still run quite well. Those being Grand Theft Auto, Age of Empires, um, and Quake. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for the Windows XP thing. Now let's go install Windows Vista. And by the way, I did not record the majority of this because of the fact that I didn't want to have anything go wrong if it had something to do with it being on camera. I don't know why I should bring it up since I've had Windows installs not go wrong on camera before, but we're moving straight on to Windows Vista and this out of box experience is not a good sight. As expected, Windows Vista did not directly upgrade from Windows XP, it put a new copy of Windows as the main one and copied all the old Windows files to a Windows.old folder. Actually, the Windows directory that it probably would have put the Windows files into is WinNT, which is still on the root of the directory. Legacy update did not want to work either, so you're gonna have to live with this basic theme anyway. I mean, I don't think this computer would like Windows Arrow in the first place, but let's see what we can actually salvage from this now ruined install of Windows. What Windows Vista did do was leave our install of Windows XP effectively intact. As such, we have programs such as CD Player, which last appeared in Windows 2000, as well as stuff like the Fax Cover Page Editor, Solitaire, and the original Windows Media Player that you probably, that looks a tad bit like Windows 3.1's Media Player. We also can set the background to that good old Windows 2000 background that I previously had set, which I'm gonna do. So let's go look at some of the uh, programs that I had installed on here. What doesn't work anymore includes AutoCAD 2000 as well as Windows 2000's Image Viewer, but thankfully what I have uh, brought out of the ashes is Windows 2000 and XP's 
pinball game. This was not included in Windows Vista due to uh, compatibility issues when porting it to the 64-bit version, and this was originally included in Windows 95. Yes, this somehow works on Windows Vista as it was in Windows XP. Also, what still works includes a Microsoft Entertainment Pack, Winamp from 2001, WinRAR, and Netscape Navigator 6. I don't know why I'm saying Netscape Navigator 6 when it's actually just Netscape 6, but I think we should just finish this off. Well, finally, it's time to install Windows 7. <laughs> it feels weird. Uh, we're finally reaching the end of this journey. I don't know what to say. Finally! We're at the last step of this. Let's finish this off. I want to first open this uh, segment with the Microsoft Entertainment Pack. This somehow still works. For uh, the explanation on why this uh, is the case, it's due to the fact that we're using a 32-bit version of Windows 7, which can run a wide variety of Windows applications from like Windows 3.1 and whatnot. But anyway, Pinball still works. Winamp still works. WinRAR still works. Netscape still works. And the program that I put on here to replace Norton Antivirus 2002 once we got Vista, Clamwin, is still working. I'm gonna probably do a video on that sometime time in the next few weeks because it's an interesting antivirus and I feel like it should get a bit of coverage. I want to last bring a bit of attention to our Windows XP programs from the WinNT directory. These still work and I think Windows has now warmed up to these programs uh, given that it's using the basic theme instead of the old school Windows 2000 looking theme that it was using on Windows Vista. And I don't think I really have anything else to say. This video was a bit of a journey. There were ups and downs but at the the end of the day, it's Windows 7. I could do something a little bit more overkill in the future, but I need to buy another socket 478 computer because I could, in theory, install Windows 95 and upgrade my way all the way to the original release of Windows 10. I can't do that because of this computer's limitations, but I know that it is theoretically possible. I don't have anything else to say, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye!